Nicole and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to do a species spotlight Saturday on this uh, Phalaenopsis violacea. And this is the variation indigo. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about its culture and how I care for it here in my conditions in New York City. If you guys like this kind of video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. With that said, let's jump right in. The Phalaenopsis violacea is a species orchid that was first described in 1861, so it's been known in the orchid community for a very long time. This orchid is, um, was found in the Andaman Islands as well as uh, northwest Sumatra, and um, this grows in very moist lowland forests along rivers. So this typically gets quite high humidity and um, it gets very uh, warm to very hot conditions. This is a relatively small to medium sized orchid. This one in particular I got as a seedling almost a year ago from Hauserman Orchids. I was told when I received it that it would be um, about one to two years from blooming and to my surprise it bloomed for the very first time about two months ago. I'll say that the blooms in the beginning were a little bit wonky but they get really nice. Um, this is the third bloom. They get nicer every time it blooms. Um, so it's got a very very pretty flower and I really like this one. So as I mentioned this is the third time it blooms. This is a sequential bloomer so it's bloomed before and it'll bloom from the same flower spike so you don't want to cut off that flower spike unless it yellows. But it typically starts blooming in the spring and it can bloom any time in the year but typically it, it um, blooms once it starts getting warmer. As this orchid gets uh, more mature as well, you'll start uh, seeing more flowers. So this has the potential to have two or three different flowers as it ages. Uh, for light, this orchid requires uh, moderate light conditions. So typically Phalaenopsis orchids get low light, but the summer bloomers, I'd say, get a little bit more. So I give this orchid oncidium type conditions and it tends to do quite well. In terms of water, this one gets watered as it approaches dryness, very similar to Oncidium conditions as well. And if you consider where this grows in very moist uh, forests along rivers, it makes sense why this one would require more water than normal. So I don't let this get bone dry and it gets watered as it's approaching dryness. Now this particular orchid is in sphagnum moss. Um, you can't really see it too much since there's a bunch of algae, but it, the sphagnum moss does quite well for it. It does have a top layer of bark and it seems to be very happy in this setup. I haven't moved this orchid to a semi-hydroponic system because it is a very cooling system for the root zone and given that this is a hot grower in the winter, I wanna make sure that I keep it as warm as possible and I don't wanna give it that evaporative cooling. For temperatures, as I mentioned, this is a warm to hot grower, which is why I find it more important to keep it away from LECO, which is what I do with my summer bloomers. I do have heat mats. I want to avoid uh, putting these on heat mats in the winter, which is why it's in LECO. The fragrance on this one is amazing. So it's got sort of a sweet and spicy fragrance. It's very pleasant. It smells very a little bit fruity but also like cinnamon or like clove so you sort of get like a mixture of sweet and spicy maybe a little bit like a cinnamon roll but not quite but you do smell a little bit of that cinnamon or clovey type fragrance it's very very pleasant and I'll say that you don't have to stick your nose right into the flower to smell it you could smell it from a distance as well it's not overpowering, but it is a lovely feature for these summer uh, blooming Phalaenopsis orchids. Humidity requirements for these guys are quite high. So typically as they grow in the wild, they get humidity of uh, 70 to 80 um, percent out in the wild. But given that they grow in home conditions, you can supplement their humidity by potting them up in a suitable medium. In my case, it's in sphagnum moss and keeping sphagnum moss moist keeps a high level of humidity around the roots. This is one that grows bare root, of course, in the wild, but in your home, 
if you're growing indoors in a condition like mine where we have a very a cold, drier winters, potting it up in something that's moisture retentive is best in my opinion. This orchid gets fed regularly just like the rest of my orchids. In the summer, I give it about 300 parts per million of fertilizer. And in the winter, it goes down to about 100 to 150 parts per million. But I find that the leaves grow actively at all times and this orchid does not take a rest whatsoever. The only thing that rests are these uh, flowers. So the flowers may stop, but it'll continue growing vegetatively. There are a bunch of variations on this particular orchid. This is the variation indigo, but there are ceruleas that are very pretty as well that are bluer than this orchid. There are alba versions of the violacea, which are sort of white, kind of like a creamy color. They're very pretty. There are versions that have a little bit more green on the petals. They're very, very nice. I've also seen uh, magenta versions, and th there are a lot of variations, and they're beautiful. In terms of the blooms um, lasting, I'll say that they last about a month in my conditions. I've heard of some folks that have this uh, bloom lasting about two months. This isn't the freshest bloom. This one has been in bloom for about a week and a half, but I know some folks that have um, that bloom this and the blooms last for about two to three months. With that being said, my conditions right now are very hot, so it's over 90 degrees in the grow room and that tends to shorten the lifespan of the blooms. In short, I highly recommend this species orchid. I find it's quite easy to take care of. You just have to keep it nice and moist and put it in a suitable medium that stays uh, moist in general. The care is not too finicky. This orchid does not have a dry winter rest and in all, it's got a very beautiful fragrant flower. Let me know down in the comments if you have a Phalaenopsis violacea, what kind of uh, variation you have and how you perceive the fragrance. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.